Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Thank you, Mr. Producer. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm joined uh, through Zoom with the one and only Catherine Wilking uh, from Canada. Uh, Catherine, welcome back. It's uh, so nice to see you, and um, I, I can't wait to hear what you're going to teach us uh, with Feng Shui, because... Tell us about yourself, uh, about what you do, and uh, why I like you so much. Why do you like me so much? <laughs> uh, finally, I get to meet you today, uh, Casey. This is just wonderful. Same here. Yes, I've been on a, a feng shui journey myself, and um, we've uh, talked about a few interviews today. Uh, I came out as a decorator, home stager, and when I found feng shui, I just, I was sold. It just made such a, such a difference. I called my first feng shui consultation uh, back when I remarried, and I was trying to put a blended family together, and it just, just wasn't working. And if you want to hear the whole story, you can find that on my website. But what's happened since then, I've applied feng shui into my personal life, my business life. It's a whole lifestyle right now. Uh, it's good, clean living. It's ethical living. Uh, it does have some religious background into the Buddhism area, but you know, it's all about ethics and living a good, clean life and preparing the next generation for the future. And it's just, it's just a wonderful feeling uh, to embrace. And um, one thing that we talked about before is it's all about the energy. I've got energy. The house has a pulse right? All the trees have energy, the flowers, everything works together for harmony. And this is what we're trying to do uh, in our lives. But one thing that's changed right now that I want to bring up, Casey, is that's becoming a problem in our homes, this energy is EMFs. It stands for electronic, electromagnetic field, and it's radiation, actually, that we're getting from our computers, our tablets, our wireless stuff, our phones, and it's just saturating people's houses. Uh, if you're ever feeling tired, out of sorts, and just um, irritated, I think irritation really comes up quickly in this, is you got to check where all this stuff is. So we're going to just talk a little bit about that uh, today, if that's okay. I would love to hear about that because everyone has it all over their, their house. They have a computer, they have tablets, they have their cell phones always in their hand, on their body. It's, yeah. it's uh, too much. I have stories for you. Okay, I want, I'd love to hear them. Well, for me, for example, if I work on my PC and if I want to take a break, let's say I go downstairs, I make a cup of coffee, I have a snack. Well, I reach for my tablet to check the news feed, see what's going on. Okay. Then I check my phone for messages before I come back and I wander back up and I've got everything's right here and I'm back on my PC. Now, that's not really a break, is it? <laughs> I haven't rested my eyes. I haven't rested whatever this is doing to my body. But these microscopic little pulses that's happening, it's like a little poke in the arm, is mm -hmm. they can actually do a lot of harm for us. So let's just say I'm going to poke you in the arm, okay? Uh, that wouldn't hurt you. Okay. If I was going to poke you in the arm for eight hours working day, <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> what would happen? You're going to yeah. get a little irritated. I get annoyed, yeah. Body language. Oh, yeah. And then you might even get a red spot. And then you're going to get mad at me. And, do you know, mm -hmm. not, so much, not so much fun. But this tiny action can cause internal stress on your body. Remember uh, way back when I started writing about this stuff, there was the towers that you'd put under your desk and the heat and the vibe from those uh, towers, right, would, would get people's legs itchy and burning. Yeah, and like yeah. So it's a little bit different, but it's micro. Uh, similar to like, let's say there's a dump truck outside your house and you can kind of go, okay, I can put up with it. I can put up with it. And when the dump truck stops at, at five o'clock or something, your whole body goes, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's that subconscious stuff. So think about these things when you're trying to connect with your phone, for example. Um, you're going to go, oh, look at all the hot spots all around me. Right, you can see that it, this stuff walks through walls, and it, you can't get away with it, really. And I was going to put this stuff in my book I wrote, geez, nine years ago, practical feng shui for the office, and I was going to put a chapter of EMFs, and it was still getting researched, it was still getting more stats. I didn't want to get um, a dated book; these things right. that go out, of that. and I was worried about the flow. So here I am, I teach my one room rescue here. I've got uh, myself in a power position. 
I've got boundaries here and oh, the next chapter is gonna be, you know, we're all gonna die. So <laughs> we really had to backtrack on how much information, early information to tell people about here. But uh, I have four tips that uh, might help people with this kind of awesome. thing. Um, awesome. First of all, just awareness. Oh, being aware that there is a little vibe that goes with all this stuff and you need to shut down. So first one is awareness. Okay. Section, second one would be shut down when you can. And certainly some plants can absorb some of this radiation. So it's a recommended for a little plant. I've got a nice plant here, a uh, jade plant right near my computer here that's doing this oxygenated you know, transfer kind of stuff and make things nice and healthy for me. And um, seriously, charge your phone away from your body at night. Give your body a break, okay? Can you say it you one more time, if you don't mind? Charge your phone at night away from your body. Okay. Okay, away from your head, but at least three feet away. And I know everybody sleeps with their phones. I'm, I'm not kidding. There's so a guy. Sorry. Don't just park it right there. I know you want to grab it first thing in the morning, but you know what? <laughs> you will. That comes next. I was at a house um, just two weeks ago. Um, unhappy family, kids at home. He was still employed, um, but not stuff going on. There was so much. It, they had the kids, all the kids stations set up. And um, I found out that the man was charging his phone on his chest at night. He would sleep flat in his back with his chest. That can't be good. I don't think there's any nookie going on in that house. That's, for sure. <laughs> that's really what's important these days. Get the phone out of the bedroom. In fact, so that's rule number four suggestion. Charge it in the bathroom. That's the first place you go after. You wake up, right? Just walk. You, you're gonna pick up your phone. You're not gonna miss anything. You're really not gonna miss anything. You're really gonna have that rest. So remember, I said that EMS can walk through walls. Yes, charge it into the at least in the bathroom, at least three feet away from you. And trust me, your body will thank you afterwards. So if you're oh. ever tired or worn out, check what's happening to your phone and those other devices. So we can talk about more friendly stuff about positive energy. <laughs> <laughs> again if you like but that's a little bit of a heads up because this is what's really happening in our homes today totally and it's funny that you were even going to put that in like nine years ago where uh, obviously it isn't as bad as it is as it is now but nine years ago you were on top of this and thinking about this I can you imagine how far we've come well that was when all the smart meters were starting to come out and this um, m5 stuff and and I, i've been you know, calling information about this. How do we keep the homes happy and healthy? And, you know, I've got my sources I tap into too. And, and you know, we could talk two hours on EMFs, but right, we're right, going right. to on a bit today. Well, can you, can you tell us a little bit? I don't know if any of uh, this information is in this, uh, this free booklet that you got going on. Can you tell me about that? Well, yeah, we've, I've got, uh, this is the chi energy that I was going to tell you a little bit more about. So let's, let's cultivate some positive vibes into our space now, okay? So chi energy is just something, I want you to smell the essence. Next time you open the window and breathe in that fresh, fresh air, right? That's the chi energy that I want you to have all through your house. And so whenever you're cleaning your desk, um, changing the sheets, doing any types of uh, cleaning and refreshing here, open the doors and windows and bring that energetic chi energy right through the house. And right away, you've got a boost, a positive boost in your home. It's very easy, inexpensive. You just got to remember to do it. So I put together a booklet called 10 Ways to Raise the Chi in Any Space. And that's free on my site, katherinewilking.com. So there's 10 different ways of very easy stuff like putting a plant out, like opening the shades, embracing the sunshine, little things like that, that you can do every single day just to raise the bar. And so you can function with a little bit more joy in your, in your heart, uh, be more productive and, you know, have some fun out of life. Mm -hmm. I got you. So now if, if people just go to katherinewilking.com, they can- It's right there on the front page, right on the front page, click. Awesome. And you got it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so uh, these uh, the, the, the to raising the chi, um, that's the energy because everything uh, is energy and everything is on a frequency. Do yeah. you do you suggest crystals in this in this uh, uh, equation? 
Oh, you mean stuff like this? <laughs> <laughs> Which what kind is it? Is that a quartz? That's nice. This is a, this is a Swarovski crystal, lead crystal. And what it does is finer cuts. So you could get cheaper crystals, of course, and they wouldn't reflect as much. But this one here is very, very multifaceted. And what it does, you hang them in the window, um, a little bit, make sure that it, it's low enough so that eaves doesn't, the sunshine doesn't get blocked off too, but it refracts all kinds of light all over the place. It's like little rainbows from heaven that just brighten your day. And um, I've got them in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And the kitchen window, of course, is an actual favorite. And I've got actually three of them in my office right now. So I'm anywhere I go in the house, I can be just embraced by this uh, joy and light and these little tiny rainbows in the house. So that's really a good one as well, too. And yes, quartz is also good. Um, I've got a quartz necklace on here. There's amethyst is a good one, too. Um, you can put... Uh, I've got a diffuser here. You can put different oils in there if you want to, just to keep things moving and keeping things fresh is just such a great way to live. Okay. All right. So you're a fan of, uh, of crystals and, yeah. uh, and should they be, um, I, you, you have a bunch in, in this room. This is your work room. Is this, this where is you do your writing? Room. And it's, you know, I have to raise this vibration in order to help others. Right. So yeah, the passion of mine. Yes. Okay. All right. And, and um, would you suggest, uh, I've heard we should put one where people enter and when people leave because it, it takes the, um, the bad energy um, and, uh, and raises their vibration if they're coming into your house. Is that something real? It is real. And you'll find that a lot of chandeliers are in the front entrance way. Wow. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that. that's been a gold standard for years and years. And uh, when you get too, too modern, there's always something that goes wrong, something that goes south. And so, yes, uh, even if you have a crystal chandelier there or, or not, you can hang other crystals. This one has a red string on it to remind me that it's an expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> but I have other crystals um, that uh, I show people what to buy and what not to buy. Or sometimes I do trade shows and I sell this, the not so, not this Warsky crystal, just a glass crystal on a fishing line so that they know that it, it's got a vibration here rather than up here. Okay. Yeah. All right. You can shop for different things. Yeah. You've got Amazon has crystals. You can, you can check those out. All right. Well. Cool. So, so tell me, tell me some more things about what's going on with, uh, with the, um, the um, Catherine Wilking feng shui design. Oh, I've, well, I've had to pivot with this COVID thing. As you know, I used to get into homes and offices on a regular basis and I had to, to uh, shift a little bit. So I do have group lessons. I do have one-on-ones counsels through the Zoom as well, too. I got uh, eight-week programs. If you've got some serious stuff to do, we can get through your entire house at that time. And one of my favorites is my one-room rescue, and that is right here through the Zoom window. And so one of the things that we do is we talk about, as I mentioned, um, putting yourself in the power position making sure you've set boundaries, whether it be you're sharing an office with someone or you've got to watch the kids and they, they have to know not to interrupt you as well. Mm -hmm. But also we're looking at uh, cryptic messages on the walls. So different things about feng shui. The first level is tangibles. So you've got, where do I put this? And where do I put this? And where do I put the function and flow of the furniture? And the second level would be the cryptic messages and colors shapes and designs. In fact, I did a whole workshop uh, for Chinese New Year this year on what's on your walls. So the messages that you send yourself could either reinforce and support what you're trying to do, or they could sabotage you. So there's some really interesting things that I've come up with with those uh, types of workshops. And lastly, of course, the next level would be a spiritual level. So you've got a little bit of woo-woo there. So some people aren't quite ready to jump into that right away, but it's whatever's comfortable here and what we can find to support you. Now, having said that, we're going to talk about your Zoom presence, which is shows up <laughs> in our one room rescue. You need me so bad. You have no idea. You have no idea. Do we have time to go into that again? What you, I want you to see what's going on behind me here. This is all, all planned. Okay, it's gender okay. neutral. It supports my business and my 
branding and my colors and what I want to do as well too. And what I've found overhead, I have is this symbol I've bought in Chinatown. It has a little carving of um, a happiness symbol right in the middle of it as well. So wouldn't you just love to work under a happiness symbol all the time? <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So what we need to do, if I had you for a client today, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would ask what kind of message that you're sending to your people. Well, uh, I, I can tell you, I like I was saying, I don't have anything that, you know, to, to do with setting this stuff up. I, I just my main thing is to concentrate on interviews. But these things right here, uh, I, I know they look uh, maybe uh, uh, aesthetic, aesthetically not pleasing. But these are what makes the sound in here okay. Yeah. The sound bounces off there. These are sound uh, pads, so mm -hmm. that's why they're there. Um, and uh, and then they, uh, I'm, I'm on a couch here. Um, uh, uh, what do you think? You're the expert. You tell you what. What am I portraying uh, to you when I'm doing an interview here? So I like that you got your back protected, so there's nobody walking behind you. And there's no closets open or laundry or kids fighting or anything back there. So, so there you're doing that run right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what I find is if you are a little bit closer to the to the um, camera here, then we actually look like we're talking, not me talking across the room to you. There seems okay. to be a lot of space. So, if you were going to set up a space, even in your house, to have a conversation, you'd want it to have. The, the people a little bit closer together than across the room. Okay. So there's setting up a balance as well too. Um, some people have their thing tilted up so that they're looking at ceiling fans and all kinds of things. So, so keep that camera around eye level. So that makes it a little bit better. And um, I once worked with a fellow, uh, gosh, he was um, probably in his seventies. He was trying to, uh, he was doing a little side hustle in his retirement years and wanted to look nice on camera. And his lighting bounced right off his bald head. <laughs> so, very easy to fix that one. But you just some of these things you don't think about. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at your presence here of uh, checking your lighting, checking your voice, checking what are people saying? What's the message I'm giving you? Am I approachable? Um, and do you want to work with me? You can tell that I'm in business and I'm I'm serious about it. I'm not just in a uh, corner of the kitchen or something like that, too. So mm -hmm. those are many, many things that you can do to to help your uh, presence here. And I help people with that. Um, look at their yep, logos. Feng Shui just ripples through all kinds of different areas in life. So those are that's I guess today that's what we're talking about. What's changed in the last couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. We've got. People are on Zoom. They've got to show a presence all the time. It's a huge that, thing, right? It's huge. It's huge, huge. And but check the EMFs. And of course, uh, you got to reach out. You've got to. You've got to get comfortable with you know the top half of your <laughs> body. Mm -hmm. If you want to wear pajama bottoms, that's up to you. But your physical presence that you're putting out in the world is really super important. Okay. Well, that's 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 great to know. Um, now, Mr. Producer. You have uh, a couple of questions um, that uh, we get from the instant feedback. Uh, Mr. Producers has uh, a few from uh, okay. from the audience, so wants to ask you what you got, my man. We have Claire in Philadelphia asks, "How does a virtual coaching session work? Is it harder to work with the space over Zoom?" Great question. Great, great question. So, a couple of things that I uh, talk about, Claire, is some people send me a floor plan. And through a floor plan, whether they're remodeling, they're tired, or they're, gee, is this a good house to buy? I can do an awful lot of work just by looking at that floor plan. I can arrange your furniture for you if you like. I can pick out colors. I can do a Google, uh, or Google Earth search on it for you to find out about other influences or personal interference lines, cell phone towers, any of that stuff. Okay. Question. Yeah, I, I just wanted just to, to ask you, what are some of those things that you talk, you, you mentioned the tower. What are some things that you're speaking of what, that you can see on Google Earth? I'm very interested well, in that. All kind, well, you can, well, if you look at a bird's eye plan, right? You can see where the waters are, the railroad tracks. If there's a golf course across the street, you can see all kinds of different things and influences that could work out. Um, yes, and a lot of schoolyards now have cell phone towers that interfere with the neighborhood, uh -huh. right? 
Yeah. There's um, water. There's um, I just I just look and pick out the stuff that that would not make sense at all. Yeah. And all, all that would have an influence on uh, the on the, on the, the on energy. The house. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was in one place that had the little boy wasn't sleeping in the house, to the, you know, whatever the circumstances whoo, a, a, a ripple from there. But what happened was across the street, this tree, this giant tree was struck by lightning two years earlier, and it still had remnants of this. And it, and then when I got into his room, guess what? The, the, the trees there. Right, coming into his office, his his bedroom. His bedroom, yeah. And so what I do actually, um, we're getting off the topic from <laughs> Claire. What I do, Claire, we have a session to talk about your goals and your intentions of what you want to happen in the house, whether it be better better relationships, a career source, whatever. We're going to work that out, and I will look at your floor plan, and you can take me right through your house with your computer. To see me to see what's going on send me pictures we'll make out a plan and if you just want to talk for an hour i'm okay with that if you want to enroll in one of the eight weeks uh, sessions here i've got classes or we can do one-on-ones and we can get your space working for you and you can love your home again i'd really like to try that so check out my website katherinewilking.com okay yeah. so we're going to go back to this other stuff um but this lightning thing here we did. So I have tools. I have what they call an elf meter electromagnetic radiation frequency monitor. So I can find out what kind of disturbances, even the transformers that they put so close to the houses, this will pick up how to correct that. And I also wow. have a dowsing rod if needed. But what a lot of the corrections are putting copper rods in the way, like the, the little boy with the this tree that still still had a vibration. We put some sound spooky in the window. <laughs> yeah, in the window ledge and cleaned everything up. Nice, nice. Quick like a bunny. Yeah, fun. <laughs> All right, Mr. Yeah, what you got? We have Robin in New Jersey wants to know: Can unbalanced energy in one room affect the energy of the entire home or office? Yes, absolutely. Now, what happens is a lot of people, uh, Robin, they close the door to the spare room. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Don't go in there. Don't go into the basement. And I go, oh, I got to go into the basement. I got to go into, don't open the closet. I'm going to open the closet. <laughs> because this is where you find your stuff that's, that's wrong or rotten. Or um, sometimes they put in um, people's store uh, antiques or hand-me-down stuff from relatives that just dump stuff on you. And that has a predecessor chi. And if we could do a whole topic on predecessor, predecessor. chi as well. Coming, the vibration of who handled it last. Okay, so some of these things need to be cleared and they end up stuck in a, a closet or a spare room. And what's really interesting about when you dive into, remember we talked about those different layers of feng shui? Yeah. There's a as a grid that I put on your house to find your relationship corner, your wealth and abundance corner, and your career and different things. And 10 bucks, okay, make it a hundred bucks. I can find that that, that room that's, um, that's got the bad energy is related to an area of your life that you're having trouble with. Wow. And so wow. it's super duper important to do that. And so if you're interested in some of, uh, I have a self-care program that just gives you little things to do for 21 days and clean up, well, for women, uh, makeup and underwear and uh, what's under the sink and what's downstairs and, and being accountable for these little pockets of, oh my God. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. And, um, you know, my husband's a bit of a pack rat as well, too. And I have to just hold my tongue wait till he's <laughs> ready, and say, do you know this? This is affecting our sex life. And he <laughs> his mess in no time. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Producer, we got time for one more. One more. OK, let's go. <laughs> we have uh, Rita in Buffalo wants to know. Is it good to point our bed towards the TV, the door, or neither? That's a good question. The bed, the master bed, Robin? Is, is, That's what um, she said, right? She wants to know which way. Which yeah. position? First of all, having a TV in the bedroom is uh, does two things. It either brings you together to watch um, 
movies and cuddle and, and have a place to relax, or it's going to set off, uh, like particularly set off some electromagnetic radiation because a lot of them are wireless and modems are in the bedrooms and all the rest of the stuff. So you decide whether or not you're going to do that. The second thing a TV does is it has a reflective quality. So if you have any night lights or street lights or any of these things that can bounce off this particular TV, it's going to affect your sleep. So TV is just one thing. So in your bedroom, you're wanting to, just like we have here, we've got our back protected. Casey and I back protected. That's important for you to do with your headboard. So you shouldn't have the bed right next to the door. You should have it on the other side of the door. So you, you're protected and you can see what's coming in the door. So don't put the bed near a window. That's not very supportive either. That's your subconscious will go on little trips while, <laughs> while you're trying to sleep. And, um, but yeah, make sure that your bed is equal, that both people can get out of each both sides equally. You both have a lamp. You both have a head have nightstand. That a kind table. of stuff. But make sure that you're you're equal partnership when you set up your bedroom. Got gotcha. okay. All right. All all great Impressive. information. Thank you for everybody uh, for for writing in and uh, my thanks to Catherine Wilking. We're at the end of the program, but let me give you the last word, Catherine. Always a, a pleasure speaking to you. Always learn so much, and I love it. So let me give you the last word, my friend. Okay, well, it's not all about woo-woo feng shui. I want you to know. It's about finding the balance in your home and your life with the people that you love. And if you sort all this stuff out now, you can weather the bumps in the road ahead. And believe me, there's going to be bumps in the road ahead. Let's face it. So any of you are stressed to the max in your home, let's have a chat about self-care and you. And then we can address the other things in your house. If you're strong, you can help the other ones. So inquire about group classes, private classes, and Oh, home visits right through Zoom here. It's so much fun. We have practical solutions for stress-free living. So check out my website, katherinewilking.com, and I'll see you next week. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Bye. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Thanks again. Are you looking for even more of the podcast and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you can now listen live on the MyTuner Radio and online Radio Box apps for iOS, Android, and the Amazon App Store. Or check us out online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on onlineradiobox.com slash US so you don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.